How you doing? This is Pastor Gary once again, and I am nerdy Pastor Gary today. I'll be wearing my glasses here. And, uh, and the only reason I'm doing that is because I, I want to see actually what I'm doing. Actually, what we're going to do today is this is our off-road series, and uh, we are motoring our way through uh, the Bible. And uh, this is an offshoot, uh, a supplement to our Sunday mornings uh, when we're doing our Study 66 series. And so today we're going to be talking about the book of Ezekiel and, of course, the great prophet himself, Ezekiel. And uh, his writings are wildly fantastic, all kinds of neat stuff. And uh, this morning, my purpose is more than anything else, just to kind of give us a um, little insight into Ezekiel, maybe, and also sort of an introduction. Uh, Sunday morning, we'll be going into what Ezekiel and picking some things apart there. Uh, but let's let's look at the book of Ezekiel today because I think it's such a fascinating book. Last week, of course, we were in Lamentations, uh, a very a very um, uh, exciting. <laughs> uh, I tease people all the time. Lots of energy in the book of Lamentations, not necessarily. But uh, today, as we look at Ezekiel, I think you're going to find some neat stuff. Uh, just so you know, in uh, full disclosure. Uh, what we're working with today are some uh, different commentaries. And um, uh, anytime you would like a list of the commentaries that I use, I'd be more than happy uh, to send those to you. We've got all kinds of different things that we like to use. And usually for each book of the Bible that I'll go through, I'll have probably anywhere from seven to ten different commentaries, uh, resources that I try to use. I don't, I don't particularly care to use just one or two, uh, because with one or two, you can sort of get off if you're not careful. And so I try to synthesize, uh, like I said, anywhere from seven to ten different ones, uh, and, and try to find the general feel uh, for more of the historical things and along those lines. So without any further delay, let's look uh, a little bit now at the book of Ezekiel. And of course, we know as we look into Ezekiel in chapter 1 uh, and verse 3, uh, that Ezekiel himself is, a, is the person uh, behind the writing. And um, he, was, he was around at the same time, if you don't know anything about Ezekiel, he was, he was a prophet around the same time as Jeremiah, and also Daniel, uh, just so you know. And so, so you have an understanding of when that was. Now, the time period w would make that then about anywhere between 593 and 565 BC, uh, before Christ. So you're talking, you're talking uh, 500 to 600 years uh, before Christ himself. And this would be during the Babylonian uh, captivity of uh, the Jewish people. So that gives you an idea of what was going on. Ezekiel was a person who would minister uh, to his generation. And um, as we have discussed going through Jeremiah and Lamentations and so forth, and uh, on Wednesday nights we're going through the Minor Prophets, we see the nation of Israel often, often uh, is a nation that is exceedingly sinful, uh, exceedingly sinful, and uh, also hopeless uh, just because of the way they were living their lives and so forth. And so Ezekiel was a person who was brought on by the Lord for what his prophetic ministry would be to speak to the people uh, to sort of warn them about what was coming and that they needed to practice repentance. Repentance, of course, turning from their sinful ways, but turning to the Lord. Repentance is not just turning away from sinful ways. It's again, turning to the Lord is what it was. And so that's what they needed to do because he was teaching them um, that, that God's not happy with the nation and that God is bringing punishment on the nation. And of course, we see that in the Babylonians coming in and uh, taking the children of, of uh, Judah, uh, southern kingdom, captive is what was going on there. So um, we learn, uh, as we did with Jeremiah also, uh, as Ezekiel would say, look, there is, there is reason to be sad. There's reason to understand that, that God's not pleased with you, but God is not going to continue in his wrath uh, forever. And that God also will bring a, um, a relief uh, to the people at some point down the line is what he will do. And he also taught that you must obey God if you're to expect to receive the blessings. And we also, in Ezekiel, just like Jeremiah, get a healthy dose of the kingdom that is coming. And so Ezekiel speaks a lot about the kingdom that is coming 
also. Key verses uh, in this particular book would be Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me um, to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Uh, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious uh, in their house, and they will know that a prophet has been among them. So you see, even in those that text right there, first of all, uh, God is making sure that the people are hearing this message. God will not be accused of not being fair and just. He is letting them know that, hey, this is what's going on. And uh, he's giving them an opportunity. Also, Ezekiel chapter 18 and 4 says, For every living soul belongs to me, the Father as well as the Son. Both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who will die. Uh, again, God's saying these are the ramifications of your sinful practices. Because you want to live a life of sin, you are going to pay dividends for that. In the New Testament, Paul would say to us in the book of Romans, uh, the wages of your sin, what you deserve to be paid is death. Sin always brings destruction and death. It will always bring that. You may think it's bringing you something good for a while. You may think it's bringing you pleasure for a while, but ultimately what's going to happen is death. Then again, in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 14, you were the model of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Who do you think we're talking about here? Well, let's continue on. This is kind of like the show, What's My Line? Uh, when someone would come out, um, uh, believe it or not, I'm not even old enough to remember that show. But the premise was someone would come out and they would start giving clues and you had to guess who it is. So let's see if you can guess. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Ruby, topaz, emerald, chrysolite, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, um, beryl. Your settings uh, and mountings were made of gold. And the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub. For so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. Wow, what a buildup. What an amazing thing. Well, of course, what, who are we talking about here? We're talking about the enemy. We're talking about Satan himself, Lucifer, uh, as it were. And of course, in the book of Ezekiel, you'll find that right there, uh, you, in chapter 28, 12 to 14, you're going to find the description that's given of him. Beautiful, a beauty beyond imagination uh, is what Satan had until, of course, his fall. And then we're told in the scriptures that the world will look at him one day and say, this is the person that caused all the problems. This is the person um, because sin will bring you lower than you could ever imagine. That's for sure. Ezekiel, as we look into it, Ezekiel chapter 33, uh, verse 11, say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? The pleading of a sovereign God. Yes, he is sovereign. Yes, he is just. Yes, he is righteous. But he's also compassionate towards his people. And he's pleading for his people. Turn to me is what you need to do. Uh, because he, again, he reminds us that the soul that sins is going to die. And unfortunately, um, the world today needs to heed, heed this same mentality. You know, turn away from your sinful ways, your sinful practices. Turn back. To the Lord. Finally, there in Ezekiel chapter 48 and verse 35, in the name of the city from that time on will be the Lord's. The Lord is there. God's sovereignty, God over it all. You know, eventually going into the uh, the new heaven and the new earth, you know, after the millennial reign, the new heaven and the new earth coming down from heaven as a bride adorned for her groom. And that's exactly what we're going to see and how amazing that is. And so what we're dealing with here when we get into the book of Ezekiel and if we start to tear it apart, you're dealing with a, a, a nation once again, unfortunately, has gone astray. This is what they've done. And so Ezekiel is being called to go and to minister to them is what he is. is this is his life's ministry. He was a 
priest, and he would have been a priest about the age of 30 here, and uh, taken, all, taken away from his homeland, and of course taken into Babylon, and so forth, is exactly what's going on. So he's learning much about uh, Babylon and what it's about, but he's also learning about his roots and about why they need to get back to the Lord. Book of uh, Ezekiel can be broken up into four parts, chapters 1 through 24. That's the prophecies of the ruin of Jerusalem. So if you want to know more about the ruin of Jerusalem, chapters 1 through 24. Chapters 25 through 32 are the prophecies of God's judgment on all the nearby nations. If you remember, Jeremiah sort of had the same thing. Uh, we saw the judgment on Israel first, but then on the neighboring nations after that. Well, here in Ezekiel, now you have the prophecies of God's judgment on the nearby nations. And then chapter uh, 33, uh, we get the probably what we would consider to be the last call of repentance on the land. And then chapters 34 through 48, they're the prophecies concerning the future restoration of Israel. So God takes us on this on this very provocative sort of journey as he is you know, telling the people to repent, telling the people you're going to be judged, telling the surrounding nations he doesn't let them get away with anything. He tells them you're going to be judged also, and he brings us all the way through until we have the restoration, as it were, of Israel. You'll see foreshadowings in this book, uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, where God denounces the leaders of Israel as false shepherds. Yes, he will denounce these leaders and say, you have falsely led, again, Jeremiah, <coughs> excuse me, does the same thing, where accusation is brought against those people who are supposedly in leadership for the good of the people, and they're really not. Ezekiel is going to carry that message from the Lord, uh, proclaiming that these people are false prophets as well, uh, you know, spouting off, unfortunately, their heretical teachings is what it is. The application in this book, of course, is that you and I should desire to have a uh, fresh, living, daily encounter with this God that we follow and that we listen to, personified through His Son, Jesus Christ, and that you and I need to be careful because even as it was said there, the soul that sins will surely die. Well, that is still true to this very day. You and I have to understand, sin doesn't just kill us as far as the spiritual death we go through, but the physical death we go through and so forth. God does not want us to sin. He is not willing that any should perish. His desire is that we would all turn. So as you read through the book of Ezekiel, Keep in mind that this message is also for you and I today and that you and I need to be very cautious when it comes to areas where we may be compromising in our life because we might think that we're getting away with it for a little while, but the truth is it will eventually find us out. You will eventually pay a price for those things that you've done. Now, look, repentance is wonderful. So repent today, turn away turn towards the Lord, allow him to cleanse you and to wash you. But always remember, sometimes, you know, that grace that God affords us, that, that will certainly forgive us of our sin, that will certainly wash that stain white. Uh, but there are, there, there are still ramifications from sinful practices that we've done that we still may have to pay a price for. And I know I hear you out there right now going, but what kind of grace is that? Well, see, don't misappropriate the idea of grace. Grace is not an eraser. Grace doesn't erase our sin. There's results of our sinful past sometimes that we still will have to deal with. It's God's grace that gets us through, and it's God's grace that also teaches us to say no to doing those things in the future. Look, grace is not there for you and I to misappropriate and just say, well, if I sin, God's grace is going to forgive me, and He's got, it, and, and so I'll be, I'll be, I'll be exonerated, expunged from my record. No, no, no. The truth is uh, your sinful practices from your past can still pay, unfortunately, uh, the price in the years to come too. So the best thing to do is don't sin. Don't walk in it. Don't become an habitual practitioner of sinful patterns in your life. Ezekiel is talking to a group of people in exile. They are now in Babylon and they are... They are um, there because they decided to turn away. They decided to walk away from our God. So I hope you enjoyed uh, just this initial 
uh, idea of what Ezekiel is all about, and we will break it down uh, further and further for you uh, this coming Sunday. So I hope you can make uh, the services Sunday morning, and uh, we will see you. God bless.